Hi everybody and welcome, I'm Coach Carolyn and today we're going to compare the tennis motion to the golf motion because the tennis motion is something that a lot of people have done before and it may even be something to do with your friends on a weekend. Just did a comparison to the baseball motion too and I love comparing it because you know we do other things in life. We don't only just play golf and golf sometimes seems so hard, so unattainable, so complicated but really it's also just a sport. And if we can relate it to other sports we already play, we all win. So let's do it. All right, so the tennis motion. I actually played eight or nine years of tennis from the ages of three to 11 before I started training golf because my parents were determined to make me pro in, in anything, really. I mean, we tried horse riding, we tried tennis, golf. Golf stuck, so that's great. That's the good news, we're here. But I worked with the coach, so I learned a thing or two. So definitely don't take my baseball advice. Tennis, I feel a little bit more more good about. So that's all I'm trying to say. I have experience. Not recent, but I have some. Tennis players or people that play a lot of tennis, they hit draws and that's great. And it is because they really know how to generate the speed and how to really kind of put that top spin on your ball. So top spin in tennis basically means you are you're top spinning it, the spin goes over the ball, the ball spins forward, right? And that's also the same as a draw spin. The opposite is the slice. When you hit down on the ball, you actually have the ball travel up the face much more, so it has more backspin. So when it lands on the green, it'll stop faster, it won't roll as much. In tennis and in golf, the top spin is kind of the equivalent to the draw. And so I see all the people that play a lot of tennis, they are usually drawers. Couple of things that they have a hard time with in golf is number one, the backswing. In tennis, you're obviously watching the ball, you're watching it come, and you're kind of already like this. But if you look at me, you're not so turned back already. And you're kind of in that turn position. Like you, when the guy hits the ball, you're, and I'm going to put this away because this is not a tennis racket. The guy hits the ball and you're here and you're already kind of waiting and you're taking it back as the ball is coming. But your whole focus in tennis is at the ball and you're not really, you know, turning back or focusing a lot on your backswing. Every motion is really geared very much towards the target and also the focus is geared very much towards the target. In golf that's different. In golf your focus is geared towards the ball, definitely also towards the target but not during the swing. During the swing it's geared towards the ball and it really sometimes causes people not to take the backswing well and execute it enough because they're already kind of like all right let's rush through the backswing, let's get to that top swing and let's get to that forward motion. Um, let's drive it this way and driving it this way is not bad. It's not wrong in golf, but we got to take the time for the backswing. And that's very similar to the, to the baseball motion. Baseball is a little bit more extreme because baseball kind of really starts up here. And if you will, right there, there's really not a whole lot of takeaway. So you do want to make sure that in baseball and in tennis, if you play those sports outside of golf, that in golf, you step up and you actually take your time to the backswing. Backswing is really, really key. If you rush your backswing, you're going to get disconnected which is gonna to lead to both misses, right, left, thin, fat, you name it, unfortunately. So establishing that body and arm connection in the backswing is crucial to keeping that arm and body connection in the downswing. To do this, a few really simple drills. Number one, for you guys that play tennis and baseball, you put your button of the club into your belly button and you'd practice this one piece takeaway. One piece takeaway. You're turning away with your core. You're not just lifting your arms away, turning away with your core and as we go into the backswing here when you're at eight o'clock with your club you start to hinge your button of the club is now going to point more towards the ground and now you're just going to turn your shoulders and really feel like this chest is facing back at the camera in this case or at your buddy that's standing behind you or away from the target you now really have executed the maximum backswing that you can because your hands are going to have a good relationship now to your core they're going to be in front of your core for most of the time here they're obviously going to get a little bit high which is great we don't have to have them in front of us uh, at the top of our backswing but now coming down they're going to get back in front of our chest and now we can really cover the ball and get through the ball and then drive towards the target like we want to so definitely we want to drive towards the target from the top of our backswing but we don't want to be so focused and worried about the target with our body with our setup as we're taking the club back because we got to need that time to take the club back to finish a good back turn to get that connection established in the downswing. So let's hit a couple of balls with the feeling of really keeping those arms 
in front of our body and making a really good back turn facing that chest to the back away from the target at the top of our backswing. Really nice swing. That's also going to allow us to have a really fluid motion. It's not going to make the, cl the, the club and the motion and the swing appear jerky. A lot of the time when you feel like you're jerky or you don't look smooth is because you're rushing this transition and that happens if you don't complete your backswing. So really make it a point next time you're out there to really make sure you complete your backswing. Some people even like to take a pause on the top. It doesn't feels like a pause, but it doesn't look like a pause. Like here, I felt like I paused at the top of the backswing, but you and I both know, you saw it, you saw it first. There was no pause. So really taking that time to turn back, taking that time at the top of your backswing is key to come down well and to match up your arms and body. So tennis players out there, you're doing a great job generating speed, but you can probably do a little bit of a better job to rotate your chest back and take that time at the top of the backswing to transition. Gosh, a little pause, <laughs> which isn't a pause, feels so good. All right, guys, next time you're on the golf course and you just got off the tennis court, make sure you think about this. But regardless, even if you don't play a lot of tennis, you should still pay attention to your backswing, making sure you give yourself that time to take it back and to transition into the downswing with a little pause that you feel, which really isn't a pause most of the time. If you love this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you like the channel and if you'd like to see more of me and also leave me a comment below what you want to see next. I cannot wait to see you guys next time. Play well. Thank you.